I am back with another video on phonetics. We saw uh, how the English accent works. We saw which are the organs of speech. We had a look at the vowels of English and also uh, at the diphthongs of English. So um, those who haven't seen them, it's okay, but it will be good if you can watch the organs of speech first before uh, watching this video. Though uh, you can watch the onson accent and diphthong and uh, vowels in any order, watch uh, the organs of speech video before you watch any other because that will enhance your understanding of the videos on the sounds and even accent. So um, this is on consonants of English. Consonants of English are 24 in number and we are going to look at how these consonants are produced. So it will be useful for anybody who want to have an understanding of English uh, sounds, particularly consonant sounds. And for those who are doing their uh, BA or MA in English uh, language uh, will uh, be benefited because I am focusing on uh, the way in which consonants can be classified and uh, how the uh, what the uh, organs of speech are involved in producing consonants etc. So that is a combined idea that I have in mind. So let's look at the consonants of English. These are the consonant sounds of English. The these are not letters of the alphabet, as you will remember. These are phonetic symbols. P, as in pin. B, bad. T, tin. D, dog. Five, f sound. V, van. Th, Thin. The. That. M. Man. N. Nose. M. Thing. H. Hat. Ch. Church. J. Jam. K. Kind. G. Gun. S. Say. Z. Zoo. Sh. Ship. J. Measure. L. Leg. R. Run. Work. Yes. Now we look at the classification of consonant sounds. Consonant sounds are classified on the basis of voicing, whether voiced or not. Place of articulation. In which part of the mouth does the articulation happen? And the manner of articulation. How does the articulation happen? What are the strictures? What obstructions work to create that sound? So voicing. Voicing happens when the vocal cords vibrate. The voiced consonants of English are B, D, G, V, Z, 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 J, M, N, N, L, R, and these two, which are semi vowels, which are difficult to pronounce individually. We will look at them later. And the voiceless or unvoiced consonant sounds in English are P. T, k, f, th, s, sh, ch, h. That is classifying vowels according to whether they are voiced or not voiced. Another way of classifying is by 
the place of articulation um, which depends on the articulators. So we need to remember which are the passive articulators in our mouth, upper lip, teeth, alveolar ridge, hard palate and soft palate are the articulators. Um, we will remember that the roof of the mouth is divided into two, hard palate and soft palate. And then you have alveolar ridge which is the place just un above the teeth, alveolar ridge just above the teeth, this, the, the hard part just above the teeth and the um, yeah, and, and, and the teeth itself is a passive articulator. Uh, and active articulators are the tongue, lower lip. And these articulators cause various strictures. And when the air flows through the strictures, different obstructions happen and different consonants are produced. So we just looked at the place of articulation that is the point in the mouth where the obstruction is created by an active articulator and a passive articulator. So we are looking only at the point where the obstruction is created. By this we classify consonants into nine groups bilabial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, post alveolar, palato alveolar, palatal, velar and glottal. We look at each of these and also study the sounds of the consonant sounds of English. Bilabial means involving two lips. Labia means lips. P, B and M sound in English are examples for bilabial sounds. Labiodendal sounds are produced when the lower lip presses against the upper teeth at, and some structure is created and the sounds in English which can be labeled as labiodendal are f sound and v sound. So remember this is not F and V. F and V are letters of the English alphabet and the, the symbols we see in all these uh, between slashes in these different slides are all sounds and that is why I, I was trying to produce a sound saying F and V rather than call them F and V. So these two are the labiodendal sounds in English. Then we have dental sounds in which the tongue touches or um, is somewhere near the teeth, upper teeth. The two dental sounds in English are f and v. So in these two sounds, the tongue should actually come out a little bit beyond the teeth and pronounce it as f and v. So like thing and that. They are similar from Malayalam ta and da, where the tongue is pressed against the teeth. So this would be the place where ta and da are articulated. In English, tongue will come out and say th and v. Alveolar sounds. Alveolar area is the place just above the upper teeth. It's called the alveolar ridge. So, alveolar sounds, the tongue tip will be somewhere near the alveolar ridge. It may either touch or it may be very near. These sounds sound z, t, t, n and l are alveolar sounds. They are produced somewhere in this region. In t and d, t and d, the tongue touches. In s, z, the tongue is near. N and l also the, the tongue touches the alveolar ridge. 
post alveolar sounds in english there is only one post alveolar sound which is r sound the tongue in producing english r sound the tongue will curl and move backwards it will not touch anywhere it will curl and move backwards in the, in the production of the al post alveolar sound r we'll talk more about r later and we have palato alveolar sounds in english where the tongue presses or is very near the alveolar ridge it it and and the palate actually it is uh, it, it is not only the alveolar ridge but also the palate the tongue is pressing against the alveolar ridge and the palate a bit so both alveolar ridge and the palate are in what hard palate is in what the sounds are ch j sh and j and we have palatal sounds palatal refers to the hard palate so where the front of the tongue rises towards the hard palate in the articulation of this sound which is the first sound in yellow and europe you have the articulation happening somewhere here and then we have velar sounds velar means happening in the back part of the tongue a mouth with the tongue pressing against the soft palate or velum the back of the tongue pressing against a soft palate k g and m are three velar sounds of english now glottal sounds only one glottal sound is there in english and that happens in the glottal region that is the vocal cords the space between the vocal cords is called glottis and h is articulated in this place that is the those were the class, uh, classification of consonant sounds according to the place of articulation now we look at the manner of articulation articulation happens when the flow of air through the mouth and nose are restricted in many ways by the movement of the active articulators these are called strictures we can classify consonants according to the nature of the strictures as well this is the manner of articulation first we looked at the place of articulation now we look at the manner in which articulation happens In the first category, we have the stops or plosives. What this is a manner of production of sound, where the oral or nasal passages are first closed and then suddenly released, and the air escapes with a plosion, like in p, where the lips close the mouth cavity and suddenly releases. and b again a bilabial sound lips closing the air passage and suddenly releasing in t the tongue touches the alveolar ridge and then suddenly releases so in all these sounds there is a stop and a sudden release so they are called stop sounds or plosive sounds p t k b d and g are the plosive sounds of english an affricate sound is a stop followed by a slow release not an abrupt release but a slow release we have ch and j as two affricates in english fricative sounds are the articulators do not close but they they come very near each other that there is a passage between them and air passes with a audible friction examples are f v f v s z sh j and h sounds these are fricative sounds nasal sounds are produced when the air flows out through the nose the mouth is closed 
and air flows through the nose. M, N and I are nasal sounds in English. And lateral sounds are produced with the air passing through the sides of the tongue. So, L, L is the only lateral sound in English. And finally, we have the approximants, which are uh, sounds when two articulators come very close, but there is no audible friction. So, that is uh, approximants. We have three. R is an approximant. And the two semi-vowels are approximate. So, I'll briefly describe these two characters. Here you have a, 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 a sound. It, it, it's very difficult to pronounce the sound because it doesn't have an independent existence. The word E-U-R-O-P-E, -E, Europe, is to be pronounced as Europe when you, you begin that let, uh, word preparing to say E and then you say Euro. Same with yellow and union and uniform. In all these cases, this is the sound in the beginning. And you begin as if to say E and then you go to the next vowel. So Europe and union, etc. example. This is a semi-vowel. It indicates that you prepare to say E and then go on to the next vowel. Same with this W symbol. It is not W. It is a semi-vowel. You prepare to say U and then go to the next vowel. For example, what, went, wine, water. So it doesn't have a full independent existence. You, it has, it, it has the sign, all the indications of a a sound similar to U, but it assumes the uh, full dimension when it moves to the next sound in that word. So, went and water are examples. For these two are semi-vowels in English. So, we don't categorize them with vowels. They are categorized with consonants. And now a word on R sound. We have, normally, the, in, in a word like C-A-R, ka, in the final position, A is silent. So, you say ka, ka, in British English. In American English, they would say car. So, here, it's a ka hit a lorry. But, when this, a word ending with R is followed by another word which begins with a vowel, this R will be pronounced. So, in this case, it is car and lorry, car and lorry. A car hit a lorry, but a car and lorry. So, whenever you have a word ending in an R, the R is silent. But, when that word is followed by another word, which begins with a vowel, then that R will be pronounced. Rivers, the river, river is dirty. You say the river is dirty. The river is dirty because the river is followed by is and e is a vowel. River is dirty. River flows. River flows. The river is de dirty. I hope you understood. This is called linking r. The, when the r sound is pronounced, it becomes easier to say. Ka hit a lorry, it's okay. But when you say ka and lorry, it takes more effort than saying car and lorry. So, this is an example for linking R. In the case of linking R, an actual R is pronounced. And here again, in, in this case, this R is followed by T. So, we don't pronounce it. Start. Start. It's not start. It is start. In American English, of course, it would be start. That's a different uh, pronunciation system. But in British English, it is start. But when the R is followed by a vowel, it is Promise. It is not promise. It is promise that R is pronounced. So remember, R is generally not pronounced, but it will be pronounced when it is followed by a vowel sound. This is. These are all examples for linking R. This, this, car and lorry and promise are examples for linking R.
but uh, we don't call this linking R because the R happens inside the letters. This is a typical example for linking R. And here in the analogy, some words which do not end in R will have an, an R coming in, in native pronunciation. So when some British people or Americans who pronounce the word Asia and Africa, they might say Asia and Africa. After A, an R sound may come. This is for the sake of ease. ease. For example, it's, it's, it's easier to say Asia and Af Africa than saying Asia and Africa. So for the sake of ease, an R intrudes here. And I have heard native speakers of English some, from some parts of England putting in an R after the draw. So I have heard drawing things. The drawing, that R comes in, intrudes to make it easier to pronounce, I understand. And here after orange, orange and apple, orange and apple. So that R comes in, for the uh, intrudes in, for the sake of ease in pronunciation. So if you keep a lookout, you will notice these kind of features in English speech. Finally, we put both together the place of articulation and the manner of articulation. Bilabial plosive sounds, p, b. Bilabial nasal sounds, m and w. Labiodental fricative, f, v. Dental fricative, f, v. Alveolar plosive, t, d. Alveolar fricative, s, and z. Alveolar nasal, n. Alveolar lateral sound, l. Post alveolar approximant, r. Palato alveolar affricate, ch and j. Palato alveolar fricative, sh and j. Palatal approximant, the sound which, which can be said ear if you want. Velar plosive, k and k. Velar nasal, m. Glottal fricative, h sound. So before we close, I thought uh, perhaps you would like to see my lips and mouth position when we pronounce the consonants of English. Let's look at them. P, p, as in pot, b, as in bed, t, as in tap, d, as in door, f, as in father, v, as in very, th, as in fangs, V as in the, M as in man, N as in nose, M as in king, H as in happy, Ch as in church, J as in jam, K as in king, g as in game, s as in sun, z as in zoo, sh as in shoe, j as in pleasure, l as in late, r as in river. Next to uh, they are difficult to pronounce alone because they are not complete sounds as we discussed. So it is want and yes. Now remember we have p, b, t, d. See the voicelessness and voicing. p, b, t, d, f, v, f, v, m, Mm, mm. 
ch, j, k, g, s, z, s, z. See the difference? S, z, sh, j. So that is voicing difference. Well, you can't actually look at my face and uh, understand sounds, except perhaps in the case of f and v, you, you see the tongue come out. Other than that, much of the thing happen, uh, happens inside the mouth, which you have seen the pictures, uh, illustrations, and I hope you have understood. So I would recommend you to go back, uh, look at uh, each slide separately, slowly, repeatedly, and I am sure you will be able to have a greater familiarity with the English consonant sounds. So all the best with your studies, all the best with your English language learning.